made some good <laughs> bread. This recipe has a story behind it. It's an easy recipe, but, you know, we like them old recipes with stories behind it, don't we? We like easy old recipes. <laughs> this is called a, a Basque bread, and it originated from the, the Basque immigrants. <clears throat> they were sheep herders up in, like, the mountains of Idaho and Nevada, Montana, California, places like that. And when they would move their sheep from mountain to mountain or whatever, I guess in the winter time, they had what they called sheep wagons. And they say that some of these sheep wagons had little stoves in them. I guess maybe it was a wood cook stove. I don't know. More than likely. And uh, so they'd have these little wood cook stoves, plus they'd have a little oven, kind of like ours does. <clears throat> but when they would cook this bread, they do it in like a cast iron Dutch oven. I'm going to be using my enamel cast iron today, cooking ours. And what they do is they would dig a hole, a pit, and put coals down in there and uh, set their Dutch oven down there and cover it up and with like uh, coals from sagebrush or some kind of a... Uh, what are them... What is that, uh, that wood out there in Nevada? Um, is, is it fir? I forget. There's certain kinds of wood out there, but anyways, they would dig these pits and put them in the ground and then cover them up coals and stuff. And that's how they'd bake this bread. <laughs> this is Basque sheep herders bread. <clears throat> but we're not going to dig a hole today. We're not digging a hole in the ground. We're going to, well, we're either going to cook it in the wood cook stove or we're just going to do it in a regular oven. And I'm thinking about just doing it in a regular oven because most people don't have wood cook stoves. Right. And because we're about to burn up in here today. <laughs> <laughs> and we really don't want to cook it. And it's it not up. even going to get above freezing today. No. But there's really not very many <clears throat> ingredients in this. My kind of bread. Your kind of bread. And it's going to make a big old Dutch oven full. A big old lo honking loaf of bread. <laughs> so are you and ready? And I'm going to eat some of it. When, yeah, as soon as it comes out while it's hot. Yes. So we're going to get to mixing this up. Okay, you're going to need a pretty good sized pan for this. And I've got my, my old wash uh, dish pan that I use for everything. I even make my chicken and dressing in this thing. <laughs> Everything. I pick my green beans in it. Just everything. Um, what we're going to start out with is three cups of hot water. And I'm going to be using my hands. I'm doing this by hand today. I'm not going to be doing this in a mixer. If, you'd if you've got a big stand mixer you'd rather do this in, that's great. But if y'all have watched my older videos making bread, y'all know that I like to get in there with my hands. I'm going to put a half a cup of butter. Now I'm putting this in hot water so it'll start to melt just a little bit. Just kind of work it around in there. I'm going to put a half a cup of sugar. Now you don't have to use sugar. You can use honey in place of it. And I'm going to use four and a half teaspoons of active dry yeast. And all I'm going to do just stir this up good with my hands. I'm going to cover this up and I'm going to let it bloom. I'm just going to let it sit and I'm going to let it bubble and bloom up. So that's our first step and it's about that easy. Now it does call for um, I think two and a half teaspoons of salt but I'm not going to be putting the salt in here with my yeast. I'll be putting the salt in with my flour. So I think that's stirred up good enough. I think the, the yeast is good and stirred up. Now I'm just going to cover it up. Now my house is pretty warm today. We got the wood cook stove uh, heating the house up. So I'm just going to cover this up. You, you don't even have to cover it up, but I always do. I'm going to let it bloom for probably about 15 minutes. Okay, you can see that our yeast and everything's good and, and bubbly. The butter's melted in it. So now we're going to start mixing up. Our bread. What we got in here is our three cups of hot water, our half a cup of butter, our half a cup of sugar, 
and are four and a half teaspoons of active dry yeast. So the recipe calls for nine and a half cups of all-purpose flour. That's going to be give or take a cup. We never know for sure. Um, I've got some bread flour that I need to use. So I'll be mixing, this is five cups of bread flour, and then I've got three and a half cups of just regular all-purpose right here. And then my other cup of flour is going to be for when I'm, I'm kneading my bread. So that's really all you need that, that ninth cup for. So <clears throat> what we're going to do is I'm going to add my five cups of flour in here. And we're just going to start with five cups. And I'm going to go ahead and put my uh, two and a half teaspoons of salt in here with my flour. And I'm going to use my hands. Now, like I said, you can do this with your mixer. But if you'd like to bake bread like I do, it's just one of those things that's very, um, I don't know, it relaxes me when I make bread like this. I can take my time with it. Mix it up. It's just very, I think, therapeutic or something. I don't know. So you can see how wet that dough is still. It's real shaggy with that five cups of flour. But we just want to get that mixed up really good. Now I'm going to use my three and a half cups. I'm going to go ahead and put it in. It's easier to work so much flour in when you do it a little bit at a time. So I've added almost the three and a half cups, probably three cups. And I'm just going to work that with my hands. And you can see how your dough comes together. Now, it all depends on your weather outside. Today is very cold. We've got sleet and snow. So a day like this and how much flour I add will be different from maybe a, a day that there's a lot of humidity. It's real, I don't know. Because the house is pretty dry with the wood cook stove. So this is still really sticky, so I'm going to go ahead and add the rest of my three and a half cups. So all together that was eight and a half cups. And like I said, the recipe calls for nine cups. But we're going to hold that, that one cup back. And you just want to work with this bread till all your flour gets worked in. And you're going to have a, a soft, uh, soft, stiff dough. It's not going to be shaggy and wet anymore. So my dough is getting getting denser, it's getting stiffer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my mat out. I'm going to get me some flour. And I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit on here. And I'm going to bring my dough to me. And this is where you're going to need. And you're going to need this bread for about 10 minutes. Every once in a while you might have to put your little flour under your bread, under your dough, but just time it for 10 minutes.
You don't want to use too much flour. So just use as little amount of flour as you have to while you're kneading. You can see that my dough's not sticking anymore. And I'm really not in need of using any more flour. So when I don't have to use any more flour, you won't have near as dense bread. Okay, I've been kneading on this dough for 10 minutes. And it, you can see how pretty it is. It's good and soft. Knead it up good. Now you can use whatever oil you prefer to use. But I prefer when I'm making bread to use olive oil. That's just my choice. And I'm going to oil my inside of my bowl real good. And this is where I'm going to let my dough rise for an hour and a half. Seems like a long time, I know. I'm going to take my dough and I'm going to put it on top, get it good and oiled on top, and then I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to cover it up. And you want it in a good warm place. And I think I'm, what I'm going to do is put it in my oven. I've got the light on in my oven. I'm going to let it sit in there. I'm going to watch it after about an hour. But I'm going to let it, I'm going to try to let it rise for about an hour and a half. So, we'll cover it up, put it in the oven or in a good warm place where there's no drafts, and let it rise. Then we'll be back, and we got a second rise that we have to go through too. Woo! Look at that proof. And that's a, that's a pretty big pan, so if it was in a smaller pan, it wouldn't have up taller. <coughs> but there's your dough. I'm going to let you have the... You, I get to... You get to... The I fun mean, part? Just lightly punch it. Don't take your aggressions <laughs> on it. I wash my hands. Okay. I know you got clean hands. See all them bubbles? You want to push them bubbles out? I'm going to punch it, too. Feels like bread. Feels like bread. So now what we're going to do is uh, take that dough out. I forgot my mat. Take that out. Now, we're not going to need this or nothing for a long time. I just want to put a little bit of flour right there. <laughs> and we're just going to kind of play with it for a minute. Just get it ready for our next rising, which is going to be in our Dutch oven. So I'm just going to need it for just a couple minutes. They're pretty good at that. It's kind of like, it's kind of fun, I tell you. <laughs> Get your stress out of them. Yeah, it's good on your forearms and my arthritic fingers. But you don't need to mess with it too much. So what we're going to do is I've got our our Dutch oven here. Now, if you're using a regular cast iron Dutch oven, um, like you'd cook with outside, they say to <clears throat> put you some foil on the bottom of it and then oil that real good. That way, if you're cooking on top of coals, the bottom of your bread won't burn so bad and stick. But what I've done here is I took some parchment paper and I put it in the bottom. And then I oiled the fooey out of it. I mean, and you can't have too much oil. I'm just telling you. Make sure you oil that parchment paper all the way around your Dutch oven. And even right here on the very top of your rim. Because if your, your bread's going to rise a second time. And it's liable to rise up over this and you don't want it to stick so 
so all that's greased like really good. Plus, we want to grease the top of this. You know why? Because it's going to be pushed against it. It's supposedly, it's supposed to if it does right. And you don't want it to stick, the top of your dough to stick. So I'm going around the edge, around the top. And you would do your regular Dutch oven the same way if you was doing it outside. You just want to make sure it's greased up really good. Just like that. And we're going to take that, flip it, get it oiled on that one side real good, then we'll flip it again. You know. And then flip it back over. So our bread's in there again, in our Dutch oven. We're going to put the lid on it. We're going to stick it back in that warm <coughs> oven. It's got the light on. And we're going to let it uh, rise about another hour. I want to show y'all. You see how the bread has risen up over the top with the lid? Lid just kind of pop up on top. So I'm going to take this out. Then I'm going to heat my oven up 375. And we're going to cook it with the lid on for about 12 minutes at 375. Okay, our oven is heated to 375. We are going to stick our bread in with the lid still on. And we're going to let it cook for 12 minutes just like that. Okay, it's been 12 minutes with the lid on top, and I'm going to take it off, and I'm going to let it cook about another 30, 35 minutes.
Them sheep herders know how to make bread. <laughs> <laughs> you know how to make bread, too. Pretty good recipe. Very easy. Makes a lot of bread, too. Makes a lot of bread. It cut up really good. Once, you know, it cooled off, you can make sandwiches and stuff out of it. It's a moist, it's moist, and I believe it makes very good sandwich bread. And it makes very good bread for anything. You browned it, buttered and browned it in a skillet and toasted it, and man, it's good. That's the better thing you're going to get out of the store. <laughs> That's for sure. Well, y'all know how much that I love making homemade bread, and this is some really good bread. So those Basque sheep herders knew what they were doing for sure. And this makes quite a bit of bread, so it would feed a pretty good-sized family. Thanks for sticking around with us and watching us making homemade bread today and eating it for our breakfast the next morning because it's good stuff. We'll be back in a couple of days. Y'all be safe. Stay warm. And um, God bless everybody. We love y'all.